I figure I'll go and take the opportunity and show you a very common problem with the Sony Handycam Digital 8 and High 8 camcorders pretty much. And why you probably should avoid buying them working on eBay and probably just buy from someone that either refurbished it already or just take your tape to a transfer service or whatever and just have them transfer it because when you buy these digital eight and high eight camcorders working and this one was actually sold as working the reason i normally don't do that normally i'll buy them as is broken or i'll find them on facebook or whatever the case is and i'll just fix them up or whatever but i brought this one actually in like new condition because it came in the box and everything and you can see that the camcorder itself shows pretty much no rare like maybe it was used once or twice i mean the lcd is very clean you know there's no bubbling or anything like it. like this camcorder was barely used if it was used at all pretty much so i went ahead and put a charge battery from another camcorder and then we'll go ahead and switch it to play and i'll show you why half the time these things will work and even if they do work it's gonna fail and it's because these have a common issue now shockingly enough one of the common issues with this particular model because this is a TRV 460 typically the CCD sensor would have failed and that's because they went to later models on epoxy based package instead of ceramic package and stuff and typically moisture works into it and it destroys the connections on the CCD and stuff and typically you'll get like you know colors over exaggerated you'll get waviness and sometimes you'll even get where they really get bad where you'll get bl complete black but lines through it and stuff like that that's a ccd fear now this one doesn't have it so it could have been possible during its life that someone might have taken it in because sony did do a pretty much recall and then that would have been that you would have taken to a service and they would have just replaced the ccd with a newer revised one because the earlier batches were the ones that had the problem but Either way, this does have another common problem, and this is a problem I kind of want to be showing people how to fix it. So let's just get out of there because it wants me really to set the clock, and I don't want to set it right now. And let me go and show you play. Now, mind you, this should have been a working camera. You know, it was sold working, not broken as is and stuff, and of course, likely, they probably just powered it on and saw that, put a picture on the camera, and that was it probably never actually stuck a tape in it and right now i got a video 8 tape which is an analog format in there and stuff like that. you can see there there is no picture at all and this does have um you know analog playback capabilities and stuff and that can go fast forward and it's not even trying typically if you want to see it's an analog tape i'll show you that switching over to the high 8, eight you know format and so forth and then i'll start playing a couple seconds later but it's not doing any it's not even trying now some, and you can see there, pause, nothing, no picture at all. Now some might say, oh yeah, that might be just bad heads, but this typically is not bad heads, and I'll show you what the problem is. It actually has to do with the cable that goes to the transport to the main board and stuff like that, and they get oxidized, and the one going from the rotary transformer on the head that goes to the preamp on the actual main board is the one that gets oxidized, and typically the transport one too and stuff, and how you fix this, you got to take this apart and pretty much just reseat the cables and stuff. So I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to go and show you this tape. So I'm going to go get the other camera out, put this tape in there and show you that the tape does have actually something in it first. So here you go. I went ahead and put the tape into this camera and I'll show you that there is actually material in there. At least I hope there is. Uh, let's just go ahead here. So. There you go, and the same tape, of course, is locked because the protection tab is over. Yeah, you can see there, there's actually the other veil I was talking common veil, typically the CCD veil, and yeah, this one is also one of the models that's affects it. This is actually a TRV 328, and this is a high 8 camcorder, and you can see it has a CCD veil because you can see the line right there, so that's the other common problem that these have typically. So let's just go to play. Here yeah, we'll get out the clock set, of course. So this is there. Let's just see if there's anything on this tape, which there should be. <laughs> yep, and there you go. And you can see there, it's playing it back. So problem is the camcorder. So we'll go ahead and stop that because I don't want to show too much of that. 
but either way it goes you can see there there is and this is a video eight so that one should have played it back obviously has the problem with the flex and I'll show you how to fix that now so one of the things you want to do to get these apart is you remove all the screws that have an error on it. Sony was nice enough to put an error to show you what screws to remove. Only remove those screws. You don't need to remove every single screw. Then once you go ahead and get the screws from here, there's three in the back that you got to get out. There's also two by the back. If you remove the few finder that you got to get out, the four on the bottom, there's going to be one right here. And then you got to slide this cover forward which gonna give you access to the head. So if you ever have to actually do the fingernail trick to clean the head, you can have access to the head. And that's why I like these. When you're transferring, it's nice to have it where the head's able to be accessed. But either way it goes, there's gonna be another hidden screw there that you gotta remove. And then you can go ahead and open this door right here because you do have to open the door and you can pop this out and then you can split this essentially in half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Get it split in half, and then I'll be right back once I'm done. So, like I said, you want to go and pull this, but you don't want to pull it hard where you rip it out. You just want to pull enough where you split it somewhat like that. Then you carefully, you're going to see this tab right here, and this would be in there. You're going to lift this tab up there. You're going to slide this flat cable out, and then you'll be able to um, put this aside and so forth. And this is your microphone assembly also for your light and everything else so you can go and put that aside safely and then the next part of course is it's just simply lifting this up and same thing you don't want to just go whew, and then you end up ripping the cables no you're gonna go slow nice and easy you're gonna see three cables there's gonna be one flat cable one that has a bunch of wires for the lcd panel itself and then another one that has just two wires on it and you're just gonna pull right at the end and just pull them out and then you'll be able to put this aside too as well. So I'm going to go and do that. And I'll be right back once I'm done. So here you go. And this is what it would look like inside. Once you get done taking this half. You can see the three cables you have to remove. And what you want to do is just grab these firmly. And straight up. Don't pull them at an angle. Just straight up. And just slowly you know, work their way out. And they'll slide right out. And same thing with these two down here for the LCD. And then you can go ahead and just put this whole assembly aside, of course, and you'll be able to have access to. Now, you do have to remove the fuel finder, and to get the fuel finder out, there's actually two screws where you can see the arrow there and the arrow there. You also got to remove those there. And then you can unplug this cable here, and then there's another one for the fuel finder itself right there, actually, that you can remove. And this whole assembly with the memory slot will remove. You don't have to remove any of these screws. The only screws you have to remove is this one and this one and this whole entire thing will be loose and then just pull those cables straight out and you'll be able to get access to the cables that we need to get access to so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and then i'll show you the cables that you need a receipt and how i tend to pull them safely so you don't end up ripping them out and stuff like that so as stated before the two that you want to remove there's actually three total i forgot the third one but you want to remove the one for the viewfinder the one for the memory stick weeder right there. And then you also want to go and remove the one for the power connections and stuff. Once you do that, you can lift. And I'll go and grab it real quick. This whole assembly, as you can see, I left all the screws and everything there. You don't need to remove those screws off. There's just the two that go to the battery connector. You can lift this straight out and then put that aside, of course. Now for the connections. And the connections we're going to be actually receding are these right here so you have to remove this right here so you can get access to it and we're gonna go and just remove them safely and just reseed it we're not gonna use no deox no alcohol no nothing we're literally just gonna remove them and reseed them because you don't want to go and put any solvent especially oil and stuff like that on these because what happens is, is there's glue on the back you know these and when you do that that glue tends to become sticky and then this will separate and stuff like that. So no, all you want to do is just pull them and then push them back in. And then of course the first step here would be to remove this here. And here, okay, this one here has a lifting tab. So you want to make sure you lift that up before you pull this. But these two here, you can pull out and then there's one right there too. But this one here, when you see something like this, that means it has a tab 
and you want to pull it straight up and then you can go and remove it without having much force these are going to be a little bit harder to pull so i'm going to show you what i do to pull those safely so as i stated earlier when you see a connector like this if it can be lift up you lift it up and once you lift it up you just grasp the cable firmly there kind of wiggle it or try to hit it at the edge there and just slide it straight out and that's it you're good on that one now on these two here you don't want to just go ahead and lift it like that because you'd actually take a chance in ripping the cable because your fingernail could dig into it or whatever and the other thing that happens too is you can bend it too much this way here and this backing starts to come off so the way i do that to help prevent this and it's a trick that i've been doing is i repaired hundreds of these is i take your small precision screwdriver right there i go under the cable like that and with the shaft port supporting i support it a little bit upward but i keep it flat and then i just use this here to kind of give me leverage but also that way i'm not putting stress at the edge of the cable there and i'll go ahead and pull it this way here and that um allows me to slide it out without putting too much bend into it and stuff like that and firmly i can slide that out and therefore not ripping the cable so that's the trick to it use the shaft end of a small precision screwdriver support it underneath and then go ahead and pull it and then that way you don't risk ripping the cable and i never ripped one doing that that's how you do it without doing that and without stressing this back in here because there's glue on there now once i get these out of course i'm simply just gonna push them in i'll show you how to do one once i get them out but one note though is you don't want to put no deox or contact cleaner or anything that it doesn't need it all you're gonna do is just slide it completely out and then put it right back in and the force from the mechanical action and the metal of course contact rubbing on it is gonna break that oxid that built up on there and that will make a good connection that will last years actually because every time i done one without no deox and stuff i typically get another two three years out before i have to redo them again where if you use deoxy because it got oil and stuff like that, it actually could contaminate the glue. And I've seen it where the glue becomes kind of liquidy and stuff like that. And over time, it can actually dirty the connector and stuff. So putting deox on it actually could do the opposite effect. And within six months and stuff like that, you'll be back doing, cleaning it up and doing it again. So don't use any deox or contact cleaner. Just remove the connector and push them back in and that will fix your problem nine times out of ten so once you get your connectors out literally you're going and line it up you want to make sure it's lined up and then you're not going to use the cable because if you use this black in here to push it in trust me that backing's going to come off or slip what i'm actually going to use is you use your fingernail here you get where the white and you put pressure on the actual backing itself and i'll slide in nice and smooth so long it's aligned make sure you have this connector lined up perfectly because if you don't you'll have resistance and this also can slide too but we're going to use this white backing not at the cable and we're going to push on that and that's going to slide the whole cable into this connector nicely and you should have a good connection so i'm going to go ahead and do that and get these cables reseated as you can see went ahead and reinserted the cables you can see there they're still nice and curved they're not overly bent at a sharp angle and the backing didn't slip off or anything and it was a success so it's all you have to do pretty much as long as you do it by the backing you're not putting stress on those cables they typically go in nice and smooth now another thing that i am going to do i'm going to go and delete this cleaning arm there and that's easy just remove that spring there's a little clip once you slide it out that way and you just pop that right out. It doesn't do any good. You can see there it starts contaminating the heads out and I do got a fingerprint on there I got to clean off. But over time, this here, the oil from there and stuff because they age and stuff, they break down and they typically tend to contaminate the heads and stuff. So typically I always remove those. They don't do any good. They do more damage than good. So just remove it. So now I have the camcorder fully back together, so we'll go ahead and power it on. Okay, and that's not that's not a problem with the camcorder. That's because the protection tab is actually locked. We can see there. Everything still works as it should. 
Of course, we can get out of this, but we're going to have to get out again when we change the mode. Let's see, the one thing that was broken actually works now. So here you go. Same thing, let's get out of this. And hopefully, we'll actually get analog playback. I'm pretty confident enough they put the whole camcorder back together, but let's see. <laughs> Then clean the heads or nothing. <laughs> yep, and see? There you go. Yeah, it is working. So, like always, it was the flex cable. So, there you go. I'm not going to say every single one's going to be that, but in this case, it was. And you can see there. Yep, it's rewinding like it's supposed to. It plays back. We can go to still there. This tape's kind of damaged, but <laughs> either way it goes, yes, we have playback. So, it is working compared to not doing anything before. So, good. Now I got another transfer camcorder pretty much. But, like I said, be wary because a lot of sellers will sell these things and say, Oh, yeah, it's fully functional and this and that and stuff like that. Let me go and stop this. They'll go and say, oh, yeah, it's fully functional. It works fine and stuff. And the most they probably did was stuck the battery in, tested the seat, powered on, put a picture, and they just didn't bother test it further and stuff. And that's why it's hard to find these things working on eBay. Because you got to remember, these things are pretty old now. And, you know, a lot of, some of them are even 20 plus years old. So, they're going to have issues and stuff like that. And one of the things is, is trying to find one works. You go in there not knowing how to fix these and stuff like that, the common issues and stuff. And okay, you put your tape in and you might even think it's your tape and stuff like that. And nine times out of 10, it's always the common issues with these, like with the flex cable, with the CCD going bad. There's a few of them and I'll cover them as I come across them and stuff. But yeah, this one's fully functional. Now I can use it as a playback machine. So. There you go.